He's scared. Oh. Right there. No. Oh. Um, we were told that Sabrina Porter bonded out. I'm going to try to call this. We've restarted the record. We're ready to do some in-custody defendants. While we wait for them, we're going to call one that didn't show up. Well, no luck there. So John, have you had any contact from Sabrina Porter? Yes, I have, Your Honor. I, well, I saw her at the jail through through the glass window on the 18th of but May. Since she bonded out, you haven't seen her? I have not. I've called the number entering in 5480, and there's a recording number not recognized. Yeah, I have the same amount of no luck. I, I do know that she also has a probation violation hearing scheduled in the the district court at, on June 3rd at 9 o'clock. That's in front of Judge Patterson. Good morning, Ms. Fairley. This is Judge Middleton. Could you take your mask Good off, morning. please? Good morning. Your poor lawyer has been waiting here for two hours and it's all Deborah Davis's fault, but you're here now and uh, you've got a couple of different cases pending. And I told you about these before. Let's remind you what they are. In file 21366 yes. FY, you're charged with two counts of resisting and obstructing or one count of resisting and obstructing a police officer and retail fraud in the second degree. That's alleged to have occurred on February the 19th of 21. In file 21443SM, you're charged with retail fraud in the second degree. That's punishable by up to a year in jail, and that allegedly occurred on February the 18th. According to Ms. Yancey, you're going to plead to attempting to resist, obstruct a police officer, and two counts of retail fraud. Um, and they're not going to charge absconding and they're requesting some restitution. You may be eligible for Holmes Youthful Trainee Probation. So there's a lot going yes. on. Um, Jordan, have I stated the plea agreement correctly? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Hannah, you haven't been here when we've been doing a bunch of other business, so let me tell you some things you need to know. Let me actually pull your case up here. Let's start with a felony case. Okay. 
find it. There's a bench warrant. We find the actual complaint. It's alleged that on or about February the 19th, you did resist and obstruct Officer Nathan Cuellar and you know, Officer Matt Borman of the Sturgis Police Department. That is a felony punishable by up to two years in prison and a fine of up to $2,000. The other charge is a retail fraud at Walgreens. It's alleged that it was open to the public. You tried to misrepresent the price for which something was for sale worth more than $200, but less than a thousand general merchandise. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail, a fine of up to a thousand dollars. Uh, the prosecutor will dismiss the felony charge. Do you understand? Yes. All right, let me ask you a couple things. Did anyone threaten you other than this plea agreement we're describing to get you to plead to this charge? No. Or threaten you? No. Do you understand that by pleading to these charges, you will be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or a jury? There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Ms. Yancey has been appointed to represent you. Could also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wish, but she's been doing a good job. I'm sure she is satisfactory. You had a trial. Yes. You never to take the witness stand and testify on your own behalf. But you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. You'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court where they could be questioned under oath, and you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Now, let's talk about this first case first. Let me go back to it. See if there's anything else in the file, like a bond form or something. Uh, can't tell. Were you in the Walgreens store on that day, the 19th of February? Yes, sir. And did you try to steal some stuff? Yes, sir. What was it? I don't even remember. I know I do remember that it was just like a bunch of little. It was. I don't. I don't even remember. All right. Would you think it was worth more than two hundred dollars? Yeah. All right. Then the officer found you. You threw down the basket, ran away, and they caught you over at Culver's? Yes. And you kind of struggled with the officer before he could handcuff you? Yes. All right, let's talk about the other case. That's file 21643. That was the day before this one. This is alleged that you were at Dunham's and uh, a white female with pink hair stole a bunch of items and they identified you as the person. Were you in uh, the Dunham store on the 18th? Yes, sir. What did you take? 
Um, I took a couple of bags. What were you going to do with all this stuff? Uh, were you going to um, sell it? Yes. All right. That's. There are certain things people steal. Um, food, uh, cigarettes, they don't sell cigarettes much anymore. Liquor, all the high-end liquor gets stolen. Underwear, the things people steal, they aren't really going to try to fence. Other smaller fenceable items tend to indicate a drug struggle. Are you struggling with methamphetamine? No, sir. Opioids? No, sir. All right, so you were just going to sell it for money? Yes, sir. Now, you live in or did live in Shipshawana. Did you come up here to do this or were you staying in Sturgis? Uh, my address is in Shipshawana, but I uh, come up and hang out in Sturgis a lot. All right, then you didn't appear for court and you got picked up on a bench warrant. You've been in jail for 15 days. Uh, <clears throat> they're recommending perhaps Haida. I don't have enough information. Let me ask you a couple questions. Are you on probation or parole anywhere else? No, sir. Are you on bond? No, sir. Have you been convicted in Indiana? No, sir. Are these the first two charges you ever got? Yes, sir. Well, you told me you don't remember the Walgreens incident very well, but yet you told me you don't have a drug problem. Were you drunk? No, I was just being reckless. Well, I'm not going to shoot from the hip. I've got to get more information. I'll need police reports. And further restitution info. Not sure I'm getting the whole picture, but you were pretty candid about admitting to both offenses. Uh, Jordan, have I got you set for a Monday in the near future? It seems like I've dragged you in here a lot lately. I am set for a motion hearing and sentencing on another misdemeanor file on June 7th at 11. I could do it then. All right. Um, yes. Yes. Yes, Hannah. Uh, I was I was at Walgreens stealing so I could make money to get a hotel room, so I'd have a place to stay that night because I was fighting with my buddy that I lived at in Chipshawana. I leave it. One of these points, she was also living with Eric Ranny, or Rainey, who has some significant no. history. Uh, no, I was just there for a little bit, and I don't know who had said, or no, actually, my friend Kimmy had said that I was there, and that I might possibly still be there. Jordan, that day is quite crowded. Can we do 1030? Yeah. Hannah, I'm going to leave you in jail for right now because you had missed court dates and you're like a leaf in the wind. Uh, do you come from an Amish family? No, sir. Okay, so there's no... Do you have family in Shipshawana? Yes, sir. And you... I honestly... Um, 
I got all of that figured out. It was mainly my phone that was messing up, but I've gotten a new one since then. So I would be able to make my court dates. Well, okay, you'll make your court date because I'm canceling your bond. Pay me now or pay me later. We'll deal with these then. Um, I want to get a better handle on you and your circumstance here. I've met you once or twice for brief conversations, uh, but this is a strange little interlude you're going on here. It was in February, and then you didn't show up for court, and I don't know what I'm dealing with. All right, both cases set for sentence. I show, I didn't. I hadn't showed up for court a couple of those times because I was in the hospital. I was really, really sick. Bernard, are you having the probation department do a PSI? No, I'm just getting the reports. Okay. There's, I thought perhaps she had a conviction in LaGrange or Shipshawana or somewhere. She says no. She's just one of our sparrows in a hurricane trying to make her way in the world. But she fought with the officer. She made two thefts over $200 in a short period of time. Then she didn't show up for court. Uh, June 7th is the best I can do. All right. I'll get the report sent to you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. And Jordan, thank you again. I'm sorry Debbie did that to you this morning. But. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thanks, Take care. All right. We're going to interfere with lunch here shortly. McLean is next. Uh, and Paul, the problem is I can't do two spots. He's going to take up the chair. Otherwise, I could go ahead with John and do the pleas on Obachowski and more. Um, at about 1130, they're going to eat lunch. So I think maybe I'd like to do Obachowski first and more, and then maybe you can simply talk to McLean at the jail. Um, could I have Obachowski next, DJ? Yeah, it will be a second, because I had uh, McLean on his way up. You're not um, going to need him then? Well, I shifted gears. I know you're coming up against lunch, and I'd like to get these other two guys done first. So let's try Obachowski. If you could put McLean in the other room, uh, or put him in this room and bring Obachowski to the arraignment room, maybe we can do both things at once. I don't okay. know if you got enough staff. Yeah, just a second. All right. Close the breakout room. Paul, what else do you represent Mr. McLean on? He's got another case that uh, I believe is scheduled for an exam for the afternoon of next Tuesday in front of Judge Patterson. That file number is twenty one eight two five FY one. Good morning, Clarence. This is Judge Middleton. Can you see me? Yeah, I can. All right, sorry to see you in this situation here. This is Clarence Carl McLean, file 21986. Mr. McLean, you're charged with several counts of criminal sexual conduct in the first degree and in the second degree. 
you've got another case pending uh, next week, and uh, your lawyer, Mr. Gibson, would like to have a chance to talk to you. So I'm going to put you in a breakout room where you can speak to him. All right? I'll okay. see you in a few minutes. Okay. Judge, they're bringing the other two to the other room for him. Thanks a lot, TJ. I greatly appreciate it. Yep. All right, Debbie, we've got all our rooms open. Waterfall. All right. <clears throat> John, are you still with us? Oh, darn it. I got to I'm going to put John Bush in there by mistake. Instead of Paul. Now I got to wait 59 seconds. Sorry about that. Johnny's in limbo over there. I don't have a lunch meeting today, but I'm probably going to work through this all through lunch. Twenty seconds. Clarence, I screwed it up. I'm going to try it again here. Okay. I put the wrong lawyer in the breakout room. All right, let's try this again. Paul Gibson and the jail. All right, there you go. John, they're using the arraignment room and they're bringing Obachowski and Sean Carson more into the other room so we can talk with them, which is good because they like Debbie and they agreed to do it for her. Is I, what's the plea offer in Obachowski? He's going to be pleading to <clears throat> driving under the influence second offense. Uh, there is a, a referral for possible participation in sobriety court. Uh, he, he'd be willing to move to Michigan to do services. I see he has a South Bend address. We've had our eyes on him. He has family in the Portage, Kalamazoo area. His, his father lives there. There may be a restitution issue with the jail. I'm waiting to hear back. Restitution the jail for what? For ripping out the sprinkler head from the fire system and causing a flood. Oh. Well, he's not even charged with that, but uh, no, it was an incident report that uh, came out of the jail. It was Sergeant Heath, so that's why I sent it to him to see if they were going to ask for MDOP. Before, before you got here, there was a young girl at the jail. John, you may remember this. She was sitting in her cell and she was eating atomic fireball candies and she was throwing them at the window and it broke a bulletproof window with a little atomic fireball candy and she had to pay like $297 to replace this allegedly bulletproof window that broke from a piece of atomic fireball so those things are really powerful so be careful to get that for Halloween Those are gross. Well, I was hopeful for the arraignment room. What's the plea offer in Sean Moore? I'll be pleading to a use of meth and driving while license suspended first. Oh, 
All right, he runs hot and cold. Hopefully today he's running cold. <clears throat> this this was his counter offer that was made. Okay. They're all going to be mad because they're going to miss lunch. And me too. Judge, I'm good through the noon hour, but I've had for quite some time, believe it or not, a haircut schedule for one o'clock with the hairstyles that I really like to make. Okay. Well, okay Can you take before. Judge with you, John? <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even going to go there on this. <laughs> <laughs> swing, by, swing by and pick me up. I need a stylist. All right. My wife tells me I'm shaggy. So your camera's not on today? All right, here's yeah. the ring. All right, we're ready to go. Good morning, sir. Are you Daniel Obuchowski? Yes, sir. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court in Centerville. You're there at the jail. Your lawyer, Mr. John Bush, is with us. This is file 21962 PD. You're charged with operating while intoxicated as a second offense. Let me okay. get where I need to be here. That's a as a third offense, excuse me. That's a felony in Michigan. It's punishable by up to five years in prison. It used to require a minimum one year jail sentence. It's alleged that it was on or about 11, no, that's your birthday, 5-8 uh, of 21 at the Hampton Inn parking lot in Sturgis. And they allege that you have at least two prior offenses. One is in Portage or Kalamazoo and the other one's in Indiana. Uh, the prosecutors agreed to reduce that to a charge of OUIL second, operating while intoxicated second offense. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars plus cost. Carries six points on your driving record. Requires that your license be suspended. Presently, you are a resident of the state of Indiana. Mr. Bush says you may be willing to move to Michigan to participate in our sobriety court program. That's I'm correct. a sobriety court judge. In fact, my afternoon is going to be filled with sobriety court cases where we look for second or subsequent offenders. I've had my eyeball on your case since you got arrested on May 8th and I've seen you were in the jail, but I saw that you lived in the state of Indiana and um, I'm not sure that I, I could do anything about it. Did you ever have a Michigan driver's license? Uh, no, sir. Do you have an Indiana license? No, sir. Okay. I am on a month to month lease right now in Indiana, so I am able to move back to Michigan. And right. do well, the we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that, but other than this plea agreement where they were agreed to dismiss the felony for a plea to the misdemeanor. Did anyone promise you anything to get you to plead to this? No, sir. Or threaten you? No, sir. Do you understand that if you plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury. There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I understand. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Mr. Bush has been appointed to represent you. You could also hire an attorney of your own choosing. You wish. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court so they could be questioned under oath, and you would have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Were you in the Hampton Inn parking lot on May 8th? Yes, sir. Had you been drinking? Yes, sir, I was. What were you drinking? Uh, mainly beer towards the end of the night. Had some margaritas. Or I guess early into the morning. Where were you drinking at? I'm sorry, what was that? Where were you drinking? I'm sorry, we're getting some feed over from some of the jail. Uh, where were you drinking these? Um, I was at a friend's house at a party. And then... Some fights happened and then everybody had to leave there and then I met up with some friends 
at the Hampton Inn, and then that's where we were continuing. Were you going to stay at the Hampton Inn, or were you going to try to drive home? Oh, no, I was going to uh, the Best Western, which was Kitty Corner from there. Uh, I what yeah. was the blood alcohol different? I can answer it was point two six three, Your Honor. Thank you, John. Oh, that's pretty hefty. Yes, sir. All was. right. Uh, we're going to consider for sobriety court. We're going to discuss it this afternoon. There's a lot of unknowns here because you live in Indiana. Um, you've been in jail since the 8th. I'm going to set this for sentencing. Uh, soon, I don't know the date right now, probably, John, as I recall, you have a conflict with June 9th. I, I, can, I can check your honor, I don't remember. What do I have on June 9th? You're on a potentially that I'm going to be out of town that day. Yeah, that was home. my re recollection. Darn it. People deserve their vacations to be sure. I haven't really uh, had a vacation in like a year with COVID. So. Yes. Well, at least one when I don't. At least one when I don't take my uh, iPad with me and do hearings while I'm gone. Yes. June 14th. At what, what time? At 11. June 14th. No problem with June 14th, John. All right. I'm going to cancel your bond. This is a pay me now or pay me later. And then What's we're going mean? to. Well, it means any jail time you're going to get, you'll get credit for it, serving it now. Um, but I would like to consider it for sobriety court. I'm not sure we can pound a square peg into a round hole, but we're willing to uh, take a look at it. There's also an issue of restitution, as I understand you did some damage at the jail. Yes, sir. And we'll find out about that also. All right, sir, you're good to go. I will see you on the 14th of June, and we'll explore the sobriety court option. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, what did you do with Mr. McLean? Uh, I spoke with him. It's, uh, my understanding was Deborah wanted to put a plea offer on the record in that case. Is that going to happen, or? Well, they never came back from the breakout room, so let's see. Okay. I'm waiting another 60 seconds. When I'm 92 years old, I wish I said, wish I had one more day that I spent waiting for the breakout room to close. There it is. Good morning once again, Mr. McLean. Uh, you've got another criminal sexual conduct case in file 21825, which is set for prelim next Tuesday in front of Judge Patterson. 
Deborah Davis from the prosecutor's office wanted to state the plea offer here. Your Honor, there are two separate CSC cases, one uh, that originated in 2019 that was recently reauthorized. That case uh, we would offer as a global package offer with the uh, CSC case that is set for next week. If you plead to one count of CSC second in that case, and then one count of CSE in the first degree in the uh, other case where he's charged with two counts of first and two counts of second. Uh, also let's, let's see if we keep this straight. The, file 21986 is alleged to have occurred in February of 21, um, and that is this case. So, uh, the other case is 21825. So let's see if we can keep it straight. So one count of CSC second and one count of CSC first. Correct. All right. And the CSC second is in 21825. The CSC first is in this count. 21986 is the case that has the CSE first. All right, I think I've got it. Mr. McLean, this is something you can discuss further with your lawyer, but I'm gonna set this also for a prelim for, that's gonna be a horrible day. The Wade Allen case is theoretically set that day, but that may get moved. We got two separate CSC cases, but Mr. McLean is in custody. Which day is that going to be scheduled for? June 1. That's the next day that it's scheduled for. And Mr. McLean, you can discuss with your lawyer whether you want to have those preliminary examinations or whether you wish to waive it and preserve any plea negotiation. Prosecutor may withdraw any plea offer if these children are forced to testify. Your Honor, we do want to make it clear for the record that if there is a preliminary examination in either of these cases, that we will not have any offers on the table. And with the case where he's charged with two counts of CSC first and two counts of CSC second, we will be seeking to have consecutive sentencing. All right. That's all on the record. That's certainly a lot for you to discuss with your attorney, Mr. McLean. The next week's case will be in front of Judge Patterson. In the meantime, Mr. Gibson will be contacting you at the jail. All right. Good luck, Mr. McLean. I'm going to release you so you can go have lunch. Paul, well, I'll release you and you can go have lunch. Thank you. All right, we're down to Sean Carson Moore in the arraignment room. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. We don't want to interrupt <laughs> John's haircut. John, we didn't settle on a time for Annette Holderman. Um, I am concerned because she's in custody. Maybe we'll continue to work on a place to put that. I'm going to do a bench warrant in Sabrina Porter and hold it for 48 hours. That's file 202540. Notice a bond forfeiture. She posted a $20,000 bond. 50,000 cash or surety. Hold 48 hours. All right, we're on the home stretch. <clears throat> I'll break a leg.
we're still waiting for Mr. Moore. Oh, you put him in the other room? Yeah, he's over there right yeah, now. All right, thanks. Oh, uh, hang up on the arrangement room. Then. Mr. Mark, can you hear me? This is John. How you doing, boss? I, I, I'm doing well. Yeah, it all yeah, happens. Yeah. It all happened this morning. The prosecutor accepted your counter offer. You're going to plead to the misdemeanor use and driving suspended this morning. They're going to dismiss the felony. Okay. I, I found out just before I hooked up on Zoom, so I haven't been able to tell you this morning. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm glad you found out. Thanks a lot. Let's get this done. All hey, right. Everybody. Time for lunch. All right, Mr. Moore. This is file 21981FY. You're charged with possession of methamphetamine and possession of a ammunition by a felon. The prosecutor is going to dismiss both of those for a plea to use of meth. The other charge is file 21982. You're charged with driving suspended second offense and no proof of insurance. They're going to dismiss no proof of insurance and they're going to dismiss registration plate violation. I believe they'll take the plea to DWLS first, is my understanding. Yes, and the charge would be to driving suspended first offense. Uh, let's go through the rights. You and I have been through this a bunch of times, but I want to make sure you understand everything. I'm losing my voice. I've been talking for four hours. I like the hairdo, though. <laughs> Thanks. Some people hate it. Debbie's trying to get me a haircut this afternoon. But all right, let's talk about this. Do you understand that by pleading to these charges, you will be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury? There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I understand. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Mr. Bush has been appointed to represent you. You could also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wish. If you had a trial, you would have the right to take the witness stand and testify on your own behalf, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to take the witness stand yourself. As I said, you'd have the right to have any witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court, and you'd have the right to be presumed innocent. beyond a reasonable doubt. You have to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. All right, were you driving a car on May 10th? Yes, sir. Was your license suspended? I never had one, but yeah, yes, it was suspended. Yeah, you didn't have one and it's suspended. We've discussed it before. You've been in jail now, I think, since May 10th. So let's yeah. look at what you got. I think you got 15 days credit. The guy under Carson, I guess. 15 days credit. <clears throat> In that case, I'm going to give you 15 days credit, 15 days. I'm going to waive the fine and cost concurrent with the meth charge, which is 21982ST. That's going to put another driving suspended on your chart on your license, but as you indicated, you don't have a license. Mr. How can we take care of this? Can we take, can we do something to take care of this man? Because I, I really need my license, man. That's the only reason I'm getting in trouble now. I mean, I'm, I, I'm usually you, out of You and I have discussed it, but I can't. I don't have the authority to give you a license. If I did, I'd have the authority to drive back. But you keep shooting yourself in the foot. Um, I don't mean to, man. Well, stop driving. Okay, well. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, that takes care of the driving suspended charge. 15 days credit, 15 days. Okay. The other charge is the methamphetamine charge. All right, in that case, they're going to dismiss the ammunition charge, which is a five-year felony, 
possession of meth as a habitual offender for a plea to possession or use of methamphetamine. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. Use of methamphetamine is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. You have all the same rights. Okay. Were you, let's take a look at where this was. For the record, I have not been doing drugs. All I right, just, I live in my car though. Yeah, you, we and I talked about that. And it's hard to live in your car when you don't have a driver's license. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I was actually, um, I was supposed to be starting a pro, uh, uh, probation, but no. due to Corona, I was pushed off. So. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing drops and everything. Even Autumn thought that I'd be a little bit dirty or whatnot. Um, I haven't been doing any drugs, man. I've just been living in my car. And when the police pulled me over, I had everything in my car. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't say no. And it was on a scale. So they scraped the scale. <laughs> and I had another lady with me. So I had a lady with me. And I was hoping she was going to suck the corona out of me. Um all right well had you i'm sorry I said, did you have something <coughs> i'm sorry i'm losing my voice um i don't have a bond form or anything um had you used my bond. had you used some meth no i don't i'm, I'm not even using drugs right now but i mean I'm, you, don't get it twisted you, i had to use to relapse but I've not been using drugs, boss. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to really get my life together. Like I've been trying to get in the probation center. I've literally been trying to get my life together. But me going through this Patterson, this other Patterson situation, and my ex girlfriend, I haven't seen her in a year. I'm really, I'm tired of living on the streets, boss. I'm tired of, you know, I got, I got two women that work at Elwood staff, and then they've been doing everything possible to help me get a job and everything. Man, I'm really trying to put this all behind me, but I've not been doing no drugs or like that. Well, if I may, uh, the factual basis would be that when he was stopped, there was scales that he acknowledged ownership of that had meth residue on it that was tested. Is that acceptable, Sean? Uh, I, I heard a little bit. I believe he said that it was there just scales, scales with residue on it. Well, that seems like a pretty rinky-dink uh, felony. It charge. is, boss. All right. Now, several years ago, you and I had a discussion, and I said, Sean, you come across as someone that uses methamphetamine. You went ballistic. You're like, yeah, I'm not using methamphetamine. How can you say that? Well, it's because you were using methamphetamine. You were so unreasonable. Most of the time I talk to you, you're polite, you're respectful, we get along fine. But when you're methed out, you're like a lit firecracker. So I want to find out what's going on. But a little bit of residue in your car doesn't affect me much and I'll find out from Autumn what's going on with this other stuff. Let's, John, where did we set that other case? June 14th? Uh, I, I can check. I think we just did it. That day works, Your Honor. It's going to be another busy day. I'm trying to get a uh, Middleton. I'm trying to really, uh, if there's any way I can, I don't know, maybe up my body can get lower so I can get up out of here and get back to work. I, I still got to start this pro, this probation thing right now. Yeah, that's what I'm right concerned now. about. This all occurred while you were on probation, so I want to find out about that. Maybe we can wrap everything up at once. All right. This is set for... Uh, since June 14th at 11, I'll leave the bond as presently set, which is pretty high. But you can go get some it's high. Yeah, for a reason. Okay. Uh, it's 5 to 12. We started at 5 to 8. Uh, I've got a full afternoon. And I thank you both for your patience, John. Your duty week's always a busy time. Thank you, Sean. All right, I think we did all 65 cases that we had scheduled from 8 o'clock, except for Wade Allen. I don't know what to do about that. Um, that one's kind of in limbo. 
pending contact from somebody from the attorney general's office. Perhaps that can be reset for another PEC. I, I, well, he isn't going anywhere, but he has filed some demand for speedy trial and that sort of thing. Uh, at any rate, um, thank you both. I'm going to stop the live feed. Your Honor, what did you decide on Ms. Porter? I made a record. You might have been outside the room. I did a bench warrant, okay. uh, $50,000 bond, 48 hours to try to find her. I just didn't write down the notes, so I just want to make sure I have that right. All right. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you, John. All right, that finishes our very long morning. We have a very long afternoon. We'll stop the live feed. We'll be back.